Good evening and welcome to worship this Christmas Eve. My name is Pastor Sarah, and we are so pleased that you have joined Trinity um, to worship Jesus on this, on this beautiful Christmas Eve. I heard tale that snow might come tomorrow, and I will be okay with that. Friends, this is certainly a Christmas Eve for the history books. So tonight, I encourage you to take some time, maybe when you're sitting near your tree or when you can view some beautiful lights, when you're feeling inspired, to write down some memories about this year and specifically about this Christmas Eve. Friends, this is a hard year to see the light, to see the joy, to see the hope, to see the peace, to see the love. I know for many of us, that moment, that feeling comes when we gather in the sanctuary around the light. But y'all, Jesus is born in our hearts no matter where we are. The light shines in the darkness no matter where we are. And so I encourage you to write about your experience of this year. The good, the bad, the ugly, the wonderful. Because when the years go on, you'll be grateful that you can remember exactly how it felt and what you experienced. We're praying for many in our community who are sick, especially for those who are in the hospital. We're praying for all of you who are missing loved ones this year. But I'm grateful for this gift of technology, which allows us to gather and to feel a sense of closeness together. Tonight, if you'd like to fully participate in the service, I want to encourage you to have some things at the ready. You need to have a candle, at least one candle. If you don't have enough for everyone in your household, have at least one candle. And then also something to light that candle. And then if you would, have elements for Holy Communion. That would be bread or crackers, and then some sort of fruit of the vine, juice or wine. Make sure that you have enough for those in your household and go ahead and gather those things if you haven't already and make sure that they are there before you so you can fully participate. We will light candles tonight. We will light them all across this city and all of our homes and maybe even across the country. Who knows who all is, is um, gathering with us tonight. It's certain that our church is much bigger than Trinity and so everywhere that light is lit and Jesus is celebrated, the light is growing with great strength. So we'll lean into that tonight as we join together for this service of carols, candlelight, and communion. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Let's gather with the Nice family as we light the Christ candle this evening. Hi, we are the Neese family. My name is Tyler Neese, and I am the youth director here at Trinity United Methodist Church. This is my son, Jet, my daughter, Harper, my daughter, Ainsley, and my wife, Tracy. Tonight is the night. Jesus is born. Merry Christmas. We light the candle of hope, peace, joy, love, and also the center, the Christ candle. The light shines in the darkness. Christmas Eve, everybody. Hadley and I are going to share one of my favorite Christmas books with you tonight. It's called Room for the Little One. It was a cold winter's night and King Ox laid in his stable close to the side of the inn. Old dog came by. He stopped and looked in the stable. I need somewhere to rest, said old dog. Come inside, kind Ox said. There's always room for a little one here. 
Old dog came in and laid down in the straw. He nestled close to kind ox, sharing the warmth of his stable. Stray Cat peered in. She saw Old Dog, and she stopped. Stray Cat arched her back, and her hair fur bristled. I'll not chase you, said Old Dog. Come inside, Kind Ox said. There's always room for a little one here. Stray Cat came into the stable. She curled up in the straw, close to the friend she had found, purring and twitching her tail. Small Mouse stopped at the door of the stable. She saw Stray Cat, and she quivered with fear. You're safe here. I won't harm you, said Stray Cat. Come inside, Kind Ox said. There's always room for a little one here. Small Mouse scurried in. She nestled down warm in the straw in the piece of the stable. Then Tired Donkey came. Joseph led him along. Mary rode on tired donkey's back. Joseph was cold and Mary was weary, but there was no room in the end. Mary said, where will my baby be born? Come inside, kind ox said. There's always room for a little one here. Tired donkey brought Mary into the stable. Joseph made her a warm bed in the straw to save her from the cold of the night. And so Jesus was born with the animals around him. Kind ox, old dog, stray cat, small mouse, and tired donkey all welcomed him to the warmth of their stable. That cold winter's night, beneath the starlight, a little one came into the world. And there's always room for a little one here. And I hope there's always room in your heart for Jesus. Merry Christmas. Oh. The Christmas story can be found in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2. It tells us while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Let us pray. Lord of Christmas, Lord of life, on the first Christmas your Son, our Savior, found no room in the inn which was crowded and filled with people, people who had gathered to pass the long winter evening. So he was born in an out-of-the-way place, 
to an ordinary young woman and her everyday husband. There she wrapped him in strips of cloth as mothers commonly did and laid him in a manger. It was the best they had to offer that night and there the Christmas baby was surrounded by love. Now on this Christmas 2020, we are scattered to out of the way places. A few in this home, a few more in that. We are more like the shepherds watching our flocks and our families by night. By necessity, our suppers and our services cannot be crowded this year. And still we are surrounded by your love. God of Christmas, send angels once again to shout good news, a joy to all peoples. That on this day, unto ordinary people like us, scattered and watching, a Savior is born who is Christ the Lord. Nudge us to step outside, there to watch the skies again for the coming of angels, bringing light and songs to split the darkness, their joy bursting out and spilling onto us. Watch over those who watch through this Christmas night, over those who are praying for a fever to break in sick rooms, over nurses in hospitals away from their families to tend to ours, over those working the night shift on ambulances just in case, over soldiers standing watch in places around the world guarding against dangers. As it was for the shepherds who watched near Bethlehem, let this be a Christmas that promises peace on earth is in our reach. Lord of Christmas, we still believe. We believe in hope that is born when darkness covers the land. We believe that you still look with a twinkle in your eye upon this earth and all its peoples. We still believe that you have prepared the gift that will leave us and all peoples breathless with wonder. Lord of Christmas, we gather in scattered out places on this Christmas night. As you found the shepherds watching through their night, find us with good news. Unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given, and hope takes its first breath. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Savior born on the first Christmas. Amen. reading from the second chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 20, the story of the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that there that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Well, dear church family and other friends that are tuning in for us um, for worship this afternoon and evening, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Um, thank you for joining with us. Um, I want to offer just a, a little bit of reflection on the word that Steve read for us um, from Luke chapter 2. So let's begin with a word of prayer. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A couple of nights ago, Daniel and I had an opportunity to get ahead on some wrapping of gifts. Um, friends, our tree was up, the lights there, the ornaments hung, but there have been no presents under the tree except the few gifts that we've received from wonderful friends and family. So um, our girls have eagerly looked every day for presents. So we decided to wrap some presents from us um, as we had the opportunity. And while we did that, we watched the movie Home Alone. Now, if you haven't seen the movie Home Alone, the very brief premise of the movie is about a little boy who gets left behind when his family goes on a trip for Christmas. He, of course, the night before wishes that they would disappear and he gets his wish and he doesn't know it's because they forgot about him. He thinks he got his wish. And so the movie begins with this little boy, Kevin, enjoying his freedom. And then over the course of the couple of days that he's there, he begins to miss his family, even his big brother that gives him the hardest time of all. He begins to miss them. And there's a lot of things that go on in this movie, but one of the themes that Daniel noticed for the first time, and I hadn't noticed before either, was about the neighbor of this little boy. The neighbor is an older man named Marley, and all of the neighborhood kids are afraid of him. And they make up stories about him because he goes out and he salts the sidewalks when it snowed, and so they have made up these stories that he's done awful things. And so Kevin is afraid of this man. And while everyone has left him alone, Kevin has to go to the store to get some supplies. And while at the store, he runs into this scary man. The man puts his hand on the counter um, and you see that on his hand, he has a recently bandaged wound. Well, the movie goes on and then later, Kevin is really missing his people and he finds himself in a church where he hears people singing, Oh, Holy Night. He's sitting there in the sanctuary and he's watching and listening to the people sing. It's a sad and beautiful moment. And he, um, he is aware of this man, this man, his neighbor. He sees him out of the corner of his eye. And at first he's afraid and then he realizes he's in a church and there are people around and he's going to be fine. And then the man awkwardly approaches him and greets Kevin. And then when you see the man, you see that he still has this bandage on his hand, but it looks like it's, um, it's cleaned up. It's not so fresh a wound. And he reveals to Kevin that his granddaughter is with the choir singing, Oh, Holy Night. He tells Kevin that he's not allowed to talk to her, and so he has to find opportunities to see her. And when Kevin asks him why, he tells him about this wound from his past, this argument that he's had with his son. And Kevin encourages him to call his son, encouraging him that his granddaughter misses him. Well, as the movie goes on, Kevin runs into some robbers that try to come in his house, and he does all manner of Looney Tune kind of things to get rid of these robbers. And then this neighbor, Marley, is the one who saves him from utter demise there at the end. And when Marley saves Kevin, he is able to, um, to, to flee from the robbers and overnight he goes to sleep, missing his family the most. And by morning, his mother arrives. But Kevin sees out his window that his neighbor Marley is having a reunion of his own. He's hugging his son and his granddaughter and you see that his hand is healed. We never really noticed the hand. As kids, we were always laughing at all the, the things that Kevin pulled on the adults in his life. But the hand is a symbol, isn't it? A metaphor for healing. Friends, Jesus is born to Mary and Joseph in a stable. No one nearby. The, the angels, they have a concert for a bunch of shepherds out in a field. It is not the entrance into the world that one might anticipate for God. And yet our God is a God who lifts up the weak and the lowly, 
Our God encourages us to come alongside those who are most vulnerable. Our God calls us into relationship to those who have needs and asks us to meet their needs, to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry. And during this last year of 2020, there have been many things that have been hard. But in the midst of it all, God has been with us. And God is continuing to give us opportunities to be the light in the world. To serve people in Jesus' name. To be those who lead people toward healing and restoration and reconciliation. Friend, I don't know what you have struggled with in this last year. I don't even know what it is that you're looking for in participating in this service on Christmas Eve. But I can tell you that Jesus is born. Jesus is here. The light has come. The light has shine, shined in the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen. Let's now turn together in our homes for a time of Holy Communion. I invite you to prepare the elements that you have so that you and your household can participate together. As we extend this table from Trinity United Methodist Church, this table that belongs to Jesus, into each of our homes this night. Let's lift up our hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit making us the people of your new covenant. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us this night as your Holy Communion table extends into each and every home. May the breaking of bread and the drinking of the fruit of the vine be a means of grace that we may know the presence of the living Christ. May we be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes at final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, I invite you to reflect on this great mystery of the incarnation on this most holy night. Though we are scattered about, we are drawn near to one another by the Holy Spirit. You may remember that as I was sharing about the young man in Home Alone, that a moment of clarity for him was as he listened in an almost empty sanctuary to the beautiful music of O Holy Night. As you reflect on the meaning and power of Jesus's very real presence and light in our lives this night 
and every day. Let's do the same. At this time, please share the gifts of bread and juice before you in your home. Thanks be to God. Amen.
gave our church members here at Trinity the opportunity to send in pictures of their family um, gathered around a candle if possible, but just their faces. And of course, we didn't receive one from everyone, and I know that that's not possible for everyone, and that some of you are busy this year and just couldn't quite get to it, but I thought that it might comfort us to see some familiar faces as we join our voices to sing Silent Night. I want to encourage you, if you have candles, to go ahead and get those at this time, or one candle, many candles for those in your home, and together we will light this our candles and we will remember that light has entered the world in Jesus Christ and we will whisper to ourselves if we're alone Merry Christmas Merry Christmas Merry Christmas until we can feel the joy in our hearts let's join together in singing silent night holy night <laughs> 